Welcome to the Daily Gospel Talk Show with your host, George Sanders. The talk show and podcast dedicated to spotlighting great people doing great things. This is your opportunity for inspiration, motivation, and encouragement. So without further delay, let's get ready for another incredible episode of the Daily Gospel Talk Show with your host, George Sanders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another awesome episode of the Daily Gospel Talk Show. I'm your host, George Sanders, and I'm delighted to have you with us today. Our program today promises to be incredible. It's a privilege for me to introduce our amazing guest, Arthur David Martin Jr., who is going to tell us about his latest book, Good Ground. And we'll delve into the inspiring work he's doing and explore exciting projects that he has on his horizon. But before we start our conversation, let's take a quick commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Attention ministry leaders. Have you ever considered growing your ministry with television? Well, the Daily Gospel Network could be what you've been looking for. As one of the nation's largest Christian broadcasting companies, the Daily Gospel Network broadcasts all over the world on popular streaming platforms like Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. If you're looking to grow and reach more people, the Daily Gospel Network could be your solution. Welcome back to the Daily Gospel Show. I'm your host, George Sanders. And today we have author David Martin Jr. Today's show is sure to be encouraging and inspiring. In today's interview, we're going to learn more about David's latest book, Good Ground, and his inspiration behind this amazing book and the transformation Christ has made in his life. Get ready for an amazing interview. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to my friend, author David Martin Jr. Mr. David Martin Jr., how are you today, sir? Man, I'm good, Mr. George. How about yourself, man? I'm excited about today, man. Hey, man, not more excited than I am, man, because I've been waiting <laughs> on this. Look, I see you in training all the time, and I keep saying yeah. to myself, I said, this is one diligent brother. He's not just here just to be yeah. here and get pumped up, man. He's here to absorb this knowledge. Not yeah. only that, I said, I, and then I've told you this before in training. I said, man, you got something to tell uh, not only the audience, man, but you got something to tell the world. And so Come on. eventually I found out, I said, okay, this brother's an author. This brother's got a book. This brother, this brother got some things going on with him. So is one of the reasons why we have you on the daily gospel talk show that we want to hear your story and what has motivated you uh, to, to create your book and so on and so forth. But before we get into that, can you tell our listening audience, Who is David Martin Jr.? Oh, man. David Martin Jr. Well, to break it down, uh, simple, uh, man of God. I'm a son. I'm a husband, a father. Like you said before, an author, a a public speaker, you know, a a licensed minister. You know, I, I wear a lot of hats, but when it all come down, I am who I am because of the grace of God. So whenever you you look at me, I am grace. You're seeing a miracle. Now, we as we talk about that, when we talk about God's grace on you, you know, a lot of people, when they mention God's grace, they talk about it from the standpoint of something that they have been through. Meaning God's right. God's grace on you has has alleviated you of some sort of you know calamity or dilemma or trial and tribulation, as you generally hear people say it. Can you expound a little bit on that? What what has God shown you, Grace, in your life? Well, like growing up in Port Arthur, Texas, you know, I had my mom, my dad, you know, in my life, they loved me and things like that. But as I started growing up and becoming a man trying to find myself, I went through a different type of route that my parents was encouraging me to do. So I got connected with the drugs, the alcohol, you know, and when I talk about drugs, I I feel like I was doing almost every drug on the menu. 
Like, mm. you know, we started off drinking alcohol, then we started smoking weed, and then we started taking all the pills, the Vicodins, the Xanax, the Lorisets, the Somas, the, and the list goes on and on. But then we started drinking um, what we call syrup, lean. Um, it's codeine with permethazine. It's a cough syrup. And we was drinking a lot of it. And this was going on like every day of my life. So it's like when I look at it now and I hear about health benefits of drinking water and I go back and I'm like, I didn't drink water for probably 15 years of my life. Like my my daily consumption of, of something to drink was mixing the codeine with the soda or drinking uh, alcohol with a soda. It wasn't no water. If we drunk water, it was to swallow a pill that we really didn't need, you know, and mm -hmm. things like that. And this went on. But when I look at God's grace, it's because I saw, I recognize now that the devil was trying to take me out because in the midst of me doing all that, then he started, then he introduced me to smoking and bombing fluid, what some people call PCP and fry and things like that. So now we're adding, it's not like we were subtracting, um, from the other drugs, we just added embalming fluid. And so all these drugs was downers that we was taking. So they normally put you to sleep. But so to not to go to sleep and stay up and keep the party going. Now we started sniffing cocaine. So now we're adding cocaine to the mix. So my heart didn't know what to do. It didn't know if it should slow down or speed up. And and this, Mr. George, this went on for 10 plus years. I just wow. put it like that. Then it was a, a everything that everyday thing. It was a lifestyle that I thought I was born to do. I, 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 I listened to a lie that was planted that I was supposed to live out the things that the rappers rap about that mm. I was supposed to really do it. So I know it's only by God's grace that I'm still alive because the choices that I made um, really Mr. Joy, I, I shouldn't be here. Man, that, you know, I, I knew, I, I said this was going to be a powerful story right here, but, but wow, I, I didn't, I didn't realize to the magnitude. So, so David, I, I here, here's what I want to understand. Okay. You come from a good family, right? You know, mama and them raising you right. They, they're telling you, you know, right from wrong. What was the thing that, that steered you to a different path? I I would say it's mainly, main, mainly like it was the environment that I grew up mm -hmm. in. It was the the music, you know, because like um, you could be in a, a loving home and uh, everything go right, but you got to go outside, Ooh. you know. So whenever you go outside, you know, I was introduced to, to different little things. And at first it seemed harmless, you know, Hey, we got a school dance. We're going to get someone that's 21 years old to buy us a little MD 2020. So we could have us a little mm -hmm. drink and then, you know, we'll smoke a little joint, you know, so we get a little high and we go laugh and then, you know, and it was all fun and games as kids, but it's like the enemy never tells you like what he's trying to do to your life. So it started off cute, but then it became an addiction out of nowhere. Because if you asked me 10, 15 years ago, hey, David, do you think you are you going to be sniffing cocaine? Then I would tell you, no, that's crazy. I never do nothing like that. But it's like the environment, the party, like when people bring in extracurricular activities to these parties that I'm at, they're bringing these things. And I was one that was titled the life of the party. So it was like, if it's there, I'm doing it. Like, and I'm going to influence everybody else to do it. So I could see how the enemy would try to take my influence and, uh, and have me influence people to do the wrong thing. So now I'm using that power of influence that God put in me before I was born. And now I'm influencing people to do the right thing. So it's like 
I understand why people go that route of selling drugs and doing drugs and, and drinking and smoking all day. I understand it. So it's like I had to go that route. Now I'm able to connect with the people. And, that, and I know I'm able to help them out more because whenever I'm ministering to them, I'm talking to them, they could hear it in my voice that, hey, man, he really lived this and mm-hmm. he understands me. Amen. Amen. And that's, listen, you know, it's hard to tell somebody about something, um, about the pitfalls or something, if you haven't walked in their shoes. You know, right. imagine being able to, you know, you can relate. And so now you're more effective in your ministering to someone. So not only did God show you grace, but he also allowed the circumstances to be used for the benefit of others, which a lot in wow. a lot of times our our trials and tribulations are used for that. You know, that yes. our experiences yes. in life are not necessarily lessons for us. Now we're we're to gain lessons from them, David. But the truth of the matter is right. God really wants us to use our experiences to help others out. Man, I, I'm I'm really impressed with you, brother. And and as I said, you know, seeing you uh, in, in the training, I always said, man, this this brother's got a story to tell. He's got something that is going to impact not only just the people that may see the Daily Gospel Network. Brother, you have something that is going to impact the world. And whatever the Daily Gospel Network can do and the Talk Show Academy and all the things that you, you, you're you affiliated with us, whatever we can do to help you out, man. Look, you you know, I'm just a phone call away. We, we're going to see this through it, and we're going to help some people. We're going to bless some people, brother, and we're going to change some Amen. lives, man, because unfortunately we have, we, have, we have a lot of youngsters that 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 are lost and that, that are experimenting right. uh, with these drugs because they don't have the, the, the necessary foundation. And they may be like David. They may came from a loving household, but like, like David said, when they go out into this world, that's a whole different thing that you have to contend with. So, so man, I, I'm I'm much appreciative, man. I'm 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 thankful uh, for your ministry and what you're doing. This is what we're gonna do, Dave. We're gonna take a quick break because I, when we get back from All the right. commercial break, I want to get into this book, man. I want to get into you know the whole transformation, and then what made you say, you know what? I got the skills, I got the knowledge, I got all the resources to be an author that that I'm going to put this on yeah. paper. I'm going to I'm going to put this in such a position that others will be able to learn from it. We want to hear about that when we get back. Don't go anywhere. This is riveting. I'm telling you. This right. this brother right here. We and look, this is not the only time we're going to have him on. We 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 know that his story is so oh, no. powerful. We got to keep him coming back for more and and and, and giving us nuggets yeah. and and spreading knowledge. So, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Looking for inspiration, motivation and the good news of Jesus Christ. Look no further, the Daily Gospel Network has what you need. With more than 300 ministries from all over the country broadcasting every week, you're sure to get your dose of spirit-filled encouragement from the great programs on the Daily Gospel Network. Catch the Daily Gospel Network on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, all mobile devices, and the internet. We're back. I'm your host, George Sanders, for the Daily Gospel Talk Show, and we have a story for you today. This is David Martin Jr. This is a riveting story. He's taken us through his bout with addiction all the way to God's grace on his life. And then this brother has the audacity. And I say audacity in a positive way. This brother has the the positive audacity to write a book about his experiences so that he can help and better our youth and just really anybody in general. Because we we say youth, David, but there are a lot of people that Mm -hmm. that are in their 40s, 50s and even 60s that are still dealing with addiction. Um, that that this book is going to be an inspiration to them. So tell the listening audience about this book called Good Ground that you've written. Okay. You know, the, the awesome thing about like what inspired me to write this book was I had a fear of writing a book. 
So I came out with uh, uh, my first book titled The ABCs of Faith, and it's a Christian devotional. I came out with that maybe two years ago, but just to like get out the fear of like Mm -hmm. how to publish a book and all this kind of stuff. People encouraging me saying you could do it. And my wife, she hired someone to do it. It was a whole story. Like I went through a lot to bring out my first book. So. After that book launched, now I got the confidence that I could do another one. And I wanted Good Ground to be that book to tap into my story because I wanted the book to be able to give people some steps that they could take to transform Mm -hmm. their life, just like me. So since I had the confidence from the first book, I was like, I know I could do it again. I know I got all the the wrinkles out, all the, you know, and all that kind of stuff, all the fears, all the self-doubts that comes to your mind whenever you're trying to do something great for God. You know, the enemy has to he has to try to talk you out of it. So (laughs) in good ground, I was like, you know what? I'm God gave me the three steps that I took to transform my life. And those steps was I had to change the people, the places, and my thinking. And once you change those three things, now you have set up an atmosphere for God to transform your life. And I'm living proof of that, Mr. George. It's not like this book is something that I made up or something that I heard on YouTube. This is a real life testimony on what to do. Because one thing, you got to change the people. Now, sometimes when you hear about you have to change the people in your life, some people tell you that you have to throw away all your old friends. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, that wasn't so. I didn't have to throw away my old friends What I had to do was bring new people around me because these new people that's around me, they're going to expose me to a different lifestyle. For example, and this works for anybody. In order to go to the next level of life, you need to change the people. Okay, I want to start a talk show. I need to get around people that started a talk show. I need to get around Mr. George. Because he he's, he's already started a talk show. He's already going where I'm trying to be. He already there. So therefore, if I if I get around him now, this is a different people. Now they could tell me what to do. He could tell me the mistakes that he made for it to take it to another level. OK, so now I need to change my places. I want to start a talk show. I'm not going to continue to go to the club on Saturday night. Because the club mm-hmm. can't show me how to start no talk show. So where I'm going to go? I'm going to start going to Zoom meetings on Mondays and Tuesdays because I'm going to get the information that I need on how to start a talk show. So now I'm going to different mm-hmm. places. Then three, you're thinking, now I got to believe that I could start my own talk show. Wow. I got to start seeing myself in a different view. I have to start thinking about the things that God says about me, that I'm more than a conqueror, that he always causes me to triumph. My mind has to be renewed. So now my thinking is different because see those three things, once you change those things, now you're able to take those steps that God going to whisper to you. He's going to start telling you to do different things. Like he told me to write the book. I wouldn't have heard him even tell me to write the book if I didn't change the people, places and my thinking because I wasn't ready. I wouldn't have been ready to step out in faith and go write the book. So, you know, that inspired me because I want to show other people that, hey, man, growing up where I grew up at pretty much like for men, it was either you're going to play sports, you're going to be a rapper or you're going to go work in a refinery. Like, that's that's your ways to get money, you know. I want to show people that, man, you could take your story and you could write a book and you could have impact on people's lives. And then the finance is just a byproduct of the impact that that you're placing on the world. So, you know, that that just inspired me to write it, Mr. George, you know, with the book to help people. 
Wow. Wow. I, you know, people, places, and changing your mentality. I love that, man. The, right. Now, that, it, it, as simple as it may sound, um, right. it, it's, it's, it, it's just that deep. And I like what you, right. you know, a lot of times, David, you know, we hear people that say, well, you got to cut all your friends out. You got to, you know, you right. got to cut people. I, I've never been one that, that, that believed in that. I do believe right. people, you have to departmentalize certain, certain people are good for you in certain spaces and places. Right. Um, but of course. What, what, when you are transforming your life, when you're trying to make the betterment of your life, what's wrong with bringing some of your friends who may have been living the past life with you? What's wrong with bringing them along on this new journey right. to be a better person? Right. Because that's what God that's wants right. us to do. He wants us to not only transform right. ourselves, but he wants us to transform others. He just, I mean, it's that's almost it. like saying, OK, I'm saved. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I found Jesus, but I, all the people I used to hang out with in the past, they don't need to find him. Right. Right. So, so, right. so man, I Come applaud on. you on that. What you're talking about is so profound. So we got we got to we got to change the people. We got to change the places, and we got to change our mentality. That doesn't mean that we right. just abandon everybody that we dealt with in the past. Because obviously, if we God has shown us grace and mercy for us to change, He has the same grace and mercy right. for them as well. So I certainly commend That's you right. on that. So, so now we we've got the book, man. This is again. I'm, I'm this is what I was not expecting all of this, but God be the glory that this is what we got. Amen. So so Amen. we're going to do everything that we can to promote your book, man. We're going to we got commercials coming up. We're going to do a, uh, quite a few things, man, to really to get this out and let people know how they can get their hands on the book and so that they can be blessed. And maybe it, it may not be the thing that impacts them directly. But we all know someone. We That's all right. know someone who can benefit. And I, and I don't care That's who right. you are. I don't care if you're white, black, you, right. you affluent, you're you're you you don't have any money, you're middle class, whatever the case is. I promise you, we all know yes. someone who who's dealing with someone who's dealing with uh, addiction, who's dealing with um, self worth issues, and and you know. One calamity right. does not necessarily they they all fit, <laughs> unfortunately, right? So it may be drug addiction for someone else. For someone else, it may be uh, them dealing with self worth issues, which which prevents them from moving forward and doing the things that God has purpose for them in their lives. So uh, we we're gonna get this book in the hands of just about everybody that we can we can touch now. As you're going right. through this 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 process of of creating your talk show, because uh, that that's something you got coming on the horizon as well. You just mentioned that you got your that's talk right. show, you've got your book out. Let me ask you this: What what do we see David Martin Jr. in five years? What 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 can we anticipate? Okay, five five years from now, man. I I to be honest, I see explosive growth because. Once I came out with the book, it's like God put it on my heart to make a private Facebook community titled The Good Ground Community. And in that Good Ground Community, I'm inviting people in, people that believe in the power of prayer, people that believe in the power of transformation, people that, you know, that want to help out in the community, because I believe that every seed that you plant on good ground, it's going to grow. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, Mr. Joe, I don't know everybody that you know, but if I could get you in the community, we plant some good seeds, we build together, then you could mm -hmm. go out to the people that's in your world and bring them in to the good, good ground community. And okay. Now they could start building. Amen. And then, you know, if everybody start bringing people in and it's a private Facebook group, because, Look, to be honest, people spend all day on Facebook. Look at that mess, looking at drama, 
all kind of other stuff. So they already on the platform. <laughs> it's just right. that now what God going to do right. is bring them to the private community where they could get empowered. They could they could look at my talk show. They could, you know, even be a guest on the talk show if they would like. Amen. You know, they got access to me. You know, we could work together. So it's like I believe that community is going to grow into something amazing. Amen, brother. Well, listen, man, whatever we can do to to, to help build the community and we're working in conjunction with you, yes. we, we're certainly here to do it. Yes. Now, you know, you and I spoke, you know, we, we're, we're nearing the end of, of the uh, the show, uh, but you and I spoke mm-hmm. off air about something and, and something that you and I have very uh, um, fond feelings about. And that's our mothers, man. Uh, can you tell us yeah. about the role that your mother played into this? Because we we got to touch on that because we we aren't anybody without our mamas, man. Tell tell us how your mother played a man. role in you getting back on your feet. Man, I promise, man, my mother played the most important role that a son would need, you know, because mm-hmm. throughout me, you know, partying and drinking and doing all this stuff. And like I said, I was doing this for at least 10 plus years every day we're not missing a day of this Mm. and like but every time i would come home and my average time i would come home would be between you know three to six in the morning you know every night every time i would walk through the doors my mother would be up waiting for me to come through the door now i told you that i'm smoking embalming fluid i'm sniffing cocaine i'm drinking syrup i'm smoking weed i'm drinking alcohol i'm popping all kind of pills all in the same day my mom would mention that because i know i'm walking basically i'm falling through the door by this time i never heard my mama say anything about the drugs anything the first thing she would say was hey baby you hungry wow and and sometimes i'll be hungry and she'll go fix me something to eat and sometimes I eat the food. Sometimes I pass out with my face in the plate. But my mm. mom showed me love. I'm talking about unconditional love. You know that agape love that we talk about that God has for us? Mm-hmm. It's unconditional. Mm-hmm. That's the love that I saw from my mother. It didn't matter how crazy I was acting. She just loved me. And love would turn you to repentance. Whenever you find out how much someone loves you, it's like I wanted to start doing better just for her. It wasn't even for me. It was for my mama. I wanted to do better. So that love, Mr. George, that she showed me, man, it, it, it turned it turned my whole life around because I never experienced that before. Well, amen, brother. Thank God for moms, man, everywhere. And I tell you what, I, yes. I, my sentiments are, are with you, man. It's it's nothing like it. And and I'm glad you you had a strong one with you so that we could witness what we're witnessing today, a true transformation, a testimony that will that will help people out there. I, I want to thank uh, Mr. David Martin Jr. for being on the Daily Gospel talk show. This has been a riveting show. And I, look, I'm going to tell you this. If you hadn't watched this show and you need to watch a repeat, email us and, and we'll we'll get you a copy of this show because I, I promise you it's going to change some yep. lives. And so, David, thank you so much for, for being open with us, being honest yeah. and, and, and giving us your story. And look, on, at the bottom of the screen, we're going to tell people how to get the book Good Ground and how to get yourself a copy. Uh, maybe it's uh, the book that is not necessarily pertaining to you, but I promise you that you have a friend, a relative, uh, someone in your life that will benefit from it. So I'm asking you to support this brother in his endeavors to, to be a positive force in the world. So this is George Sanders, host of the Daily Gospel Talk Show. I want to thank you for watching. I want you to be safe. And until next time, may God bless. See you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Gospel Talk Show with your host, George Sanders. The talk show and podcast dedicated to spotlighting great people doing great things. Join us next time for your weekly dose of inspiration, motivation, and encouragement. So until then, stay safe and God bless from your friends at the Daily Gospel Talk Show and host George Sanders.